Yeah, yeah I just okay. didn't feel up to it. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, evenings, it's just really? afternoons and evenings. Oh, okay. It's a fatigue. Uh -huh. And it's not all the time, so it's like unpredictable. Uh -huh. So, but we're ready to start. It is Thursday, April, what is it? 15th. 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 So, middle of the month, a, a cool one. So, if you're home, uh, make sure you have a strap handy or a belt or whatever you use for stretch and start to sit comfortably. Um, if you need to sit up on blankets and at home, if you're sitting in a chair or on blankets, feel free to have your legs long or have your, your legs crossed. Just get really comfortable. And close your eyes. Lengthen up through the top of your head and really feel your shoulders releasing down away from your ears. And let your eyes be really lightly closed. Start to feel almost like you're relaxing into your eyes, almost like your eyes are melting back into the sockets. And just accept your breath coming in, going out through your nose. Feeling the breath coming in to the belly, letting your belly just gently expand a little bit. If you're comfortable to come in towards those three part breaths, inhaling into the belly and then into the ribs and then all the way up into your chest. release our arms on down beside us here now and let your arms float just a little bit away like you have a breath of air underneath your arms there lengthening up through the top of the head and then we'll inhale both arms up a little higher straight out from your shoulders and flex your hands and bend your elbows a little bit let yourself just release here and then press gently out into the heels of the hands with straighter arms so again, inhaling and bringing the hands in a little bit. And as you exhale, pressing out like you're pushing two invisible walls away from you. And then one more time, inhaling, coming in. And on the exhale, pressing out into the heels of the hands. And now let's let our hands come the other way. Let the fingertips face down so that you come into the tops of your arms a little more. And then let your hands come into loose fists and circle the fists around. So try to keep your arms fairly still, really isolating the hands, feeling the wrists here, might even get some pops and snaps. And then we'll reverse and go the other way, letting those circles come the other direction. Good, and then come back into long arms here. Take a nice inhale. And as you exhale, twist to your right, but keep your arms out beside you for a second. So it's not a very deep twist if you let your spine actually do the twisting here. And then lower your arms on down. So it depends on you where your left hand goes. Maybe it wants to go over to your right knee, maybe it doesn't. It depends on you, how you're sitting. Let yourself lengthen up. One more breath. And now as you exhale, come back to center, float your arms back out from your shoulders again. Take a nice inhale here. And then on the exhale, we'll twist to the left. So again, you're letting your spine do the twisting without using your arms here. Let yourself just find that twist. And then when you're ready, go ahead and lower your hands down. Again, just let the arms go where they want. Feel that twist in the middle of the back. Think about your sitting bones drawing down. So one more inhale here. And on the exhale, come on back around into center. This time let's inhale our arms straight up from the shoulders 
straight forward, and then turn your palms away from each other. So your thumbs face down and your pinkies face up. And then bring one hand on top of the other, it doesn't matter which, and clasp your hands together. Now let your shoulders really soften down away from your ears. And start to lower your hands down. Now you can look at your hands with your focus. If you feel like you wanna stay just with the hands down a little bit, release your neck there, do. Some of you might wanna keep the hands going all the way up between into that pole you created there and then lower your head down to rest on your hands. So if you can do that, do. If not, just keep the hands out. Let yourself release through the neck here. And let your breath come in and go out easily. And now we're going to send the hands back through if they're up. Let them come on back forward of your chest, rising up. And now we want to switch the hand that was on top. So just coming into the other hand on top. And again, let your shoulders really melt down here. Lowering the hands again, letting your gaze come down too. And you can stay there or you can keep the hands going and turn your hands kind of inside out so that you come into again, releasing your forehead down onto your hands there. And just release and breathe. Let your jaw go. And then we'll send the hands back down if they were up and come on back forward with the hands out from the chest. And then we'll release our hands. Bring our arms on behind us here now and let yourself, if you're in your chair, just lay back so that you feel that openness in the chest. If you're on the floor, you can put your hands on the floor, fingertips, or lean back onto your flat hands if you want to. Just enjoy. Imagine you're breathing into your lungs from the bottom to the top equally into both your lungs, really. And then we'll release to come all the way back upright again. If you are cross-legged on the floor, you might want to stretch your legs out before you switch, but let yourself then switch the cross of the legs. Bring your other leg in front there. And let's release our arms on out beside us. And again, feel that breath of air underneath your arms. And we'll inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down through the midline to be in front of our hearts. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And let's inhale the arms back up into that wide V here now. Now turn your pinkies towards each other. Let your shoulders melt down. Now feel your feet in the floor, whatever part of your feet are touching really, it depends on how you're sitting, and press down into what is touching on your feet on the floor. Just press down into your feet. Feel how your core engages. One more breath. And then we're gonna release and let the arms come on down beside us. Shake out a little bit. Stretch your legs out for a second. Let your feet circle around both directions. And, you can flex and point, play around a little bit, let your feet move around, your legs if you need to. And we are gonna make our way towards hands and knees, or if you know you don't wanna be on your knees, don't be, right? Use a blanket, or of course, use a chair, some height for you to be up so you're not down on your knees on the floor. And also, if your wrist bothered you, lots of things you can do. You can come onto fists, Take the wrist crease away. You can hold the edge of a seat of a chair. You know, if you're on the floor, you can even use your blocks. Sometimes that helps to have your hands with fingers hanging over the blocks or come down to your forearm, right? So you've got to figure out for you what works so that you can really focus on moving through the spine without feeling like you've got stress in your hands or your knees. So start to just ease your way. Find your cat pose for a second here. Draw your navel towards your spine. Feel your tailbone <coughs> dropping down. Really let your head hang. And then when you're ready, next time you inhale, let your tailbone reach back and up. And that makes the belly drop down a little bit. The ribs sink down. You can look between your hands or you can start to bring your gaze forward into your cow. So just take your time. Whether you prefer to stay in cat or cow for a breath or two without moving, 
or perhaps you like to continually just keep flowing through the spine here. Just warming really the back up really all the way through. Enjoy being able to have that kind of supple movement through your spine. Good, and we'll finish off the one that we're on or that we're moving into. Let yourself come back to more neutral spine, looking between your hands, and then just turn your head to look to the right, and let your arm come up, your right arm come up straight out from your shoulder, palm faces down. You can stay just right there for another breath or two, or you can have the hand rise up higher towards the ceiling if you want, if your shoulder lets you and then release the hand on back down. And we're gonna to look to the left and see if you can maybe bring your left arm up. Again, these all depend on your shoulder. The hand can come out from the shoulder or be lower. You can come higher and higher and higher depending on how your shoulders feel, right? And then we'll release and come on back down with the hand. Let yourself step your left foot forward and your right foot back here. And let's find a lunge, whether your hands are up on blocks or you have your hands on a chair, or maybe you want to use the blocks lowest, middle, or highest height, and maybe you want to use the floor. Just remember, you want some support under your hands. So rather than having them way far away, see about your hands being kind of under your shoulders, or if you're using the chair, maybe a little forward of your shoulders. And really enjoy. Find that length at the back of the right leg. Draw your shoulders away from your ears here and zip up your belly and let's switch legs. So however you wanna to come to the other side, just be mindful of getting the alignment where your feet are really kind of on very narrow railroad tracks so you feel good up into your hips. That front knee is bent no farther forward than your ankle. And it feels just really easy to come into feeling the length through your spine Good, we're gonna switch legs again. So again, mindful of that front knee, make sure it's not bent any farther forward than your ankle. If you do wanna rise your left hand or forearm up to your thigh, you can or you can keep your left hand down. And we're gonna switch one more time. Coming into it again, finding that alignment with the front knee, deciding if you'd like to lift your right hand or forearm up to your thigh or not. And then we're gonna bring our hands down if they're up and step forward and come into standing forward bend. So take a peek at your feet, make sure you've got your feet parallel as possible so that you feel really good. You don't have one foot farther ahead than the other or one foot more turned out than the other. Try to feel pretty equal. Let your knees soften and then you decide how much support do you need. You know, do you like to put your elbows above your knees to support your back long? Do you want to use your hands on blocks or on the chair or your forearms down on the chair? And just feel that ease of sitting bones over the heels, feeling the weight of the torso coming forward, just allowing the backs of the legs to open up easily. So remember, it's fine to bend your knees. You, you don't wanna feel any kind of pulling sensation in your sitting bones. You're gonna feel a stretch, but you don't want it to feel uncomfortable, right? So nice, easy breaths. Feel the breath coming in to expand the ribs on your inhale. Really letting your face soften. Imagine your forehead smoothing out. One more nice full breath. And then from here, we'll bring our hands on up to our hips and bend our knees and rise up. Inhaling our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, letting our hands come down together in front of our hearts. 
So finding your mountain pose, and if that means moving around a little bit to get yourself just where you want to be with your feet, really start to feel that sense of pressing your feet down into the floor, like you're pushing the ground away from you. And let's just float our arms out a little bit from us. Find that breath of air again under the arms and rotate our palms forward and spread your fingers out a little bit. So feel like you're just, just spreading the fingers a little bit, feeling energy in the hands there, like you're reaching the fingertips down towards the ground. So you're very open across your chest. Your shoulders are down away from your ears. And you feel very symmetrical. Obviously, we're not really symmetrical side to side, but imagine that you are. That you just feel so balanced between the right and the left side that you could almost be exactly symmetrical. Then on your next exhale, bend your elbows, let your hands come right to meet there in front of your chest. Let your thumbs connect there, each of your fingers. And again, feel that nice, soft connection there in your hands. Letting your mountain pose feel like you could stay there all day because once you get aligned, it's very easy. And then we'll let our arms again unfold on down beside us and inhale both arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, we'll bend our knees and come on forward into standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find a nice flat back, wherever you like your hands to be, your chair, your legs, your blocks. And we'll step our right foot back and come into lunge, heading into our first sun salutation. So draw your shoulders down, press your feet away from each other, inhale. Exhale into a downward facing dog pose. So your choice of how you have your hands in your dog, what height? Chair, if they're up on the chair, your heels can be on the floor and you're lengthening back through your sitting bones. And if they're on the blocks, might be same thing. You might have your heels on the floor or they might be hovering. And on the next inhale, let's come on out towards a plank. You know, you don't have to go all the way into that push-up pose. You can put your knees down if you'd rather, or go to your forearms so you're out of your wrists. You can bend your elbows, do a little push-up if you'd like. Sometimes coming into elbows bent just a little bit in towards your ribs and staying there, very strengthening. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. Walk a little bit in your dog. Bend a knee at a time. Let your head just gently turn from side to side when you're walking. Feel, really take your time with it so you're not trying to rush through. You're really taking your time. And then we'll finish back at center into that full dog. And let's bring our right foot forward to find lunge. And you know, you can put your left knee down to get there. You can put both knees down, whatever works. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart and parallel. And again, use the support that you need. See if you can let your head hang. Remember, if that bothers your back at all, then just bring the head more into line with your spine. Just try not to lift your chin up and feel that tension in the back of the neck, right? So, let yourself release as best you can in your neck, your throat. Easy, deep breaths, receiving your breaths into the ribs, feeling the movement of the ribs as you inhale and exhale. Good, and then we'll let our hands rise on up to our hips. We're gonna bend our knees and rise up to standing. We'll inhale the arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. From here, let's release our arms beside us and inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And now stand here in mountain with your arms overhead. You can keep them wide if you need, right? Or you can have the hands over your shoulders. And then lower your left arm down and let's come over into side stretch. Let your left hand touch the outside of your left leg and then slide the left hand down a little bit, coming into your standing side stretch. Now really feel like you're reaching into that right foot on the floor down there. And 
and then we'll rise on back up. Let's bend that right elbow. Now, whatever you need to do to, in order to get your elbow up as much as you can. And then take your left hand to the, to the upper arm there, in front of your upper arm, your right upper arm. See if you can just encourage a little bit of movement back. A little more stretch for your tricep there. And then we'll release and unfold both arms on down beside us. We're gonna inhale the left arm all the way out and up. And we're gonna come over into side stretch. So again, really pressing down into that left foot in particular. So really focus on the left foot pressing into the floor. One more breath. And then rising on back up to the top, bending that elbow. And again, you know, it depends on you where your elbow comes. If you can take your right hand there to the front of the left upper arm and just gently, I mean, even if you're just kind of holding it there, right? Maybe you can encourage it to go back a little bit. That's up to you. Good. And then we're gonna release both arms on back down beside us and clasp our hands behind us. Now see if you can inhale and let the arms come a little off your back. And when you exhale, let the arms and the hands come back to touch, your hands touch again. So inhale the hands away. Don't do it if it hurts your shoulders. Exhale, let them come back. And then one more time, inhale, letting the hands come away. And on the exhale, letting them come back down. So keeping your hands where they are, one more inhale here. And on the exhale, we're gonna bend the knees and fold forward from the hips into a nice long back parallel to the floor. So your knees can stay bent, right? It's all, actually, when you straighten your legs often, you shift your hips back behind your sitting bone. So try not to do that. Keep the knees bent. Let yourself lengthen out through your spine here. And draw your elbows up a little bit towards the ceiling. Feel how your chest melts down a little bit. One more breath. And now if you wanna continue folding forward, do. If you know you can't do that, it won't work for you, don't do it. Some of you may want to release your arms off your back once you're forward, that's up to you. Feel your feet in the floor. Make sure you're not rolling to the outside of your feet. Lift your toes up for a second. And then release your arms on back down, toes back to the floor. Let your next inhale lengthen your spine. And we're gonna step our left foot back and come into lunge. So press the feet away from each other. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Inhale, exhale into a downward facing dog pose. So, you know, a dog should feel good. So if you have your hands at a height where your dog does not feel good, change it. Try to put your hands to a different place. Blocks can change height. You can go up higher to the seat of a chair. You can do it on your coffee table at home. You can do this dog on your kitchen cabinet and be 90 degrees, right, at your hips. We're gonna come on out towards that plank. And again, it is totally optional to do push-ups, to stay in plank, to do a half plank, to go to forearms, to bend your elbows if you'd like, moving through into some little push-ups, but certainly staying in plank, very strengthening for the core, reaching your sitting bones down towards your heels. And then we'll come on back into down dog again. Very nice. And this time we'll bring the left foot forward to come into lunge. So again, however you need to get yourself into that lunge. And then again, really enjoy pressing the feet away from each other. Zip up the low belly. And then we'll step forward again. Back to our standing forward bend. Now, I know some of you like to hold your elbows. You know, it feels good to feel that entire, like, traction just by holding your elbows and coming into in your forward bend and totally releasing. That is not for everybody's back, so use whatever support you need. Feel your breath coming in and going out through your nose. And then release your hands back to your hips. We're gonna bend our knees and rise on up and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, we'll come into a little chair pose with the hands to the heart. So maybe you wanna think about, oh, well, there's a chair back here, it's really high. And I'm just gonna bend my knees a little bit, let my torso shift forward just a little bit. Right there, you're using your thighs, right? You can really feel all the muscles around your knees engaging. 
You know, you don't have to shift lower to get into really using your hips and your legs in a chair pose. So be where you can. Let yourself feel pretty good about being even between your feet all the way up into your hips. One more breath. And now on your next inhale, press into your feet, rise your hands up through the midline of the body. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings and come forward into your standing forward bend. And let your next inhale lengthen your spine out. And we're gonna come into a down dog. Now, as you place your hands to height you like and you step back, let your elbows softly hug towards each other. Bend your knees if you need to in dog, remember. Really focus on the length of your spine. And let your next inhale bring you out towards a plank. Now, again, it's your choice how you do this plank. If you wanna add a back bend here, you can. It's not necessary. So you can come to the floor and then push up into a little sphinx or into a cobra, or you can come through for an up dog right from the plank if you want. And then we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose. If you need to walk a little bit too, Bend your knees, wag your tail, kind of, you know, let your dog move a little bit. And then we're going to do that same thing. We're going to come on out to plank. Again, it is optional to do any kind of back bend. So you're more than welcome to come down to the floor, go onto your forearms into Sphinx, come into, if you'd like, an up dog or a cobra, and then we'll make our way back into down dog. This time, let's bring our left foot forward to find that lunge. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart, parallel. Let your arms go to where it feels good for you. You, know, you might wanna put your hands up on your back. You might wanna clasp your hands and rest them at the back of your head if that feels good. Or you might want to use that support, elbows above the knees, hands or forearms on support there. And then just let your breath come fully and deeply in and out. Just let the inhales and exhales feel like they are equally important so that they start to even out a little bit. And then we'll let our hands come to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise on up to standing. And releasing the arms beside us. Let's inhale the arms just a breath away from us again. Turn your palms forward. Reach down through the fingertips. Feel that sense of space between your ears and your shoulders. And then as you exhale, let your hands gently come right together there in front of your chest. Coming into your mountain pose. Enjoying it. Your head feels maybe a little lighter. There's a more energy swirling through the body now. We've used sun salutations to get really warmed up through every part of our bodies, really. And then we'll go ahead and release our arms on down. Shake out a little bit, move around however you need to. And we're going to come into some warriors. So if you're using a chair, turn the back of it around maybe to face you. Otherwise, have your blocks handy. Here you're going to need blocks at least at the front of your mat. And we'll step the right foot back for warrior two. So right foot's about parallel to the back edge of your mat. Left foot is about parallel to the long edge. And whether your feet are two feet or three feet or four feet apart, doesn't matter. Just Get really comfortable when you bend that front knee at finding the alignment of the knee coming out over the center of your foot. And then from there, let your, your arms, elbows bend and your fingertips rest on the tops of your shoulders. Let your shoulders now release as you're, actually think about from the ears, the base of your ears here, down the sides of your neck to the tops of your shoulders. And when the elbows melt down, think of just like, it's like you just released all through there. It feels really good. So from here, just take a couple of breaths. And then unfold your arms all the way down so hands come to your thighs. Turn your palms down towards your thighs. And then we'll float the arms up as we inhale and turn to look out over the top of that left hand. Now, you know, if your neck doesn't let you do that, don't do it. You can keep your gaze more 
where you were before forward, or you can let yourself turn to look over the top of that hand. Good. From here, let your right hand just come for a second onto your right hip and lean forward a little bit with your torso. Put your, either your left hand or forearm on your chair maybe or on your thigh. And then turn to look at the floor. We're going to come into side angle here, but what we're going to do is take our right arm down and let it swing forward and back a little bit. Really feel the weight of that right arm. It's like a pendulum, right? It's just going forward and back, forward and back. And then we're going to swing the right arm up into line with our right ear. Let the pinky face down and the thumb face up. And then think about pressing into that right hand or forearm. On the chair it's fine. Or your leg and then open up into your side angle so that you let yourself open up all the way into side angle here. Good. One more breath. We're going to come on back into warrior two. Let your feet press gently away from each other. Feel your hips. Enjoy reaching out through the fingertips. Really feel both sets of fingertips now. And then we'll bring our hands down. We're going to find lunge here. So how do you do that? What, what height do you want to put your hands? Maybe to the back or the seat of the chair. Maybe down to the blocks. But let that right heel release directly behind your foot. And then we'll bring our left hand up to our left hip. And we're going to turn into a little twist here. Hand on the low back, palm down if possible. If you know you like to add the arm up, go right ahead. So you can stretch the arm straight up from your shoulder if you choose to. Just enjoy coming into that twist where it feels good for you. One more breath. And then let yourself release. Left hand back down. And let's step forward and get our feet right under us. Bend your knees a little bit. Let yourself feel equal through your feet. And then we'll bring our hands to our hips, press into our feet and rise on up to standing. We'll inhale the arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. Think about lengthening upward through the top of your head. And then let yourself shift a little bit forward and back. So you come a little to the balls of the feet, a little to your heels. And it'll have to be little because otherwise it's almost like you're going to lose it and not be able to keep your balance, right? And then come back to center and go right and left a little. So let yourself go right and left. And now for the really fun part, we're going to think about making a circle. Come forward to one side, to the back, to the other side. But that's easier said than done to keep your body like in one piece, right? So you're not bending from the waist. It's like you're just making these circles. You can reverse if it feels good to reverse. But the best part is when you imagine letting those circles get smaller and smaller and smaller. Really kind of like you're going down the drain, right? Smaller and smaller and smaller until you get just right at the center. And it feels so easy. It feels so good. So just let yourself have another breath there, feeling very centered in your mountain pose. And then we'll release and let our arms come on down. Shake out just a little bit. Good. We're going to do the other side. So stepping left foot back for that warrior two. And again, does not matter how far apart your feet are. So they can be two feet, 18 inches, three feet, four feet. Just take they align the, that front knee into consideration there, really. Let it be lined up no farther forward than your toes. And then bring your fingertips to the tops of your shoulders again. Let your elbows really melt down. And again, find this ease in the sides of the neck. It's like, you know, somebody's just massaging the sides of your necks, the tops of your shoulders, all the way there to the tips of the shoulders there where you have your fingertips. Let it feel good. And then slowly unfold your arms down so that you start to turn your palms in towards your thighs. And then we'll inhale both arms all the way out into our warrior two arms, turning if you can to look out over the top of that right hand. Remember, if your shoulders bother you, you have to adjust however you need to. Reach out through the fingertips. Feel the feet pressing gently away from each other, that powerful warrior two. 
and then bring your right hand just down for a second. I'm sorry, left hand down to your hip for a second. And now lean forward so that you either put your right hand or forearm onto your thigh. You know, it's easier to put it on your thigh if you're in a longer stance than if you're in a shorter stance. If you're in a shorter stance, it might be better to put your hand there. Look at the floor and let your left arm dangle. Now, you know, you can hold the chair. If you feel like you're going to lose your balance, that's the greatest thing about having the chair. I don't know why more people don't want to use it. And then swing that left arm up by your ear. Let your pinky face down, your thumb face up. And you're going to press into that right hand or forearm in order to open up into that side ankle. And there you're really using the core of your body. You're also very extended through the sides of the body. Length of the spine. One more breath. Beautiful. We're going to come back to warrior two, which is big core, pushing the feet away from each other to get back into your warrior two pose. Now we're going to bring our hands down and we're going to find that lunge, remember. So what you want to use is the height you want to be for your lunge, whether it's up on blocks or on a chair, however low you want to be. And then bringing your right hand to your right hip and turning into that twist. So again, if you can, put your palm down. If your shoulder lets you do that and roll that right shoulder up, do. And if, if you want to add your arm, you can add the arm up. And if that's too much, put it back down, right? Stay as level as you can in your hips. One more breath, and then we'll release to bring the right hand back down. We're going to step forward, get our feet right underneath us again, and then we'll bend our knees, press into our feet. We're going to rise up and inhale our arms all the way out and up, and on our exhale, let our hands come down and come into your mountain pose. Remember, tailbone is reaching down towards between your heels, not tucking forward. And hips are over ankles, shoulders over hips. Enjoy that mountain pose. You know, you can be aware of feeling your heart beating, feeling the breath in and out. And then we'll release and let our arms come on down. Shake out a little bit. We're going to come into warrior one this time. So we're again going to come to the front of the mat. This time we'll step the right foot back. Get your shoulders square. Think of keeping them square and then stepping that right foot back. Now you might want to widen your stance. It might feel better in your hips. It's up to you. You can line your heels up in a straight line or you can separate the feet a little more. But bring yourself around with your shoulders. Let your hands come behind you and see if you can, with your right hand, encircle your left wrist. Your elbows are really quite bent. Let the backs of the hands, you know, the right hands there resting on your low back, wherever it comes. And then just have a couple of easy three-part breaths here. Inhaling into the belly, into the ribs, all the way up into your chest. Feel as equal as you can as between your feet. And then we'll release our arms on down. And we're going to inhale the arms forward, rising them up. Now, you can separate your hands more to a wide V, or you can have your hands right over your shoulders. If you turn your pinkies inward a little bit, then you can maybe find more space between your ears and your shoulders. So enjoy feeling this uplift in the front of the body. Feel the openness in the front of your right hip. One more breath, and then we'll lower our arms right on down beside us. And we're going to straighten the left knee out and turn to the side of your mat so that you can come wider with your feet, parallel for a wide-legged forward bend. So some of you might want to grab blocks, right? Take blocks if you need, one or two, or hands to the floor if you'd rather. And once you get your hands down, go ahead and bend a knee at a time. Remember, you can be up as high as you need to be. You can even stack blocks up. If it feels like too much to go down even to blocks under your hands, stack two blocks up. See if that's better. And then go ahead and bend a knee at a time. And be mindful if that bothers your knees, don't do it. Just let yourself kind of find a little bit of inner thigh stretch there. 
and then finish off. Come on back into center with your spine, and now walk your hands out either on the blocks or the floor where you have a long spine. And then from here, we're gonna add just a little twist. We're gonna keep our left hand on the block or the floor, bring our right hand to our right hip, and roll that right shoulder up. Come into a little bit of a twist there. So just enjoy finding that twist in the middle of the back. Try to feel equal through your legs, whether your knees are bent or straight. And then come on back down with that right hand. And we're gonna go left hand on up. So you roll yourself up as much as you can, looking to the left and trying to keep level there so you're not dropping into either side, either hip here. Knees again can be bent or straight. And then we'll bring that hand on back down. And then take your time. Set up to where you can be comfortably with your breath. Maybe you want to stack blocks up and put your hands or your forehead on blocks. Some of you might want to put your elbows above your knees and support your back that way. You know, that's a really good way to support the low back. But if your back is fine and you want to walk your hands back more towards between your feet or to hold your ankles, go right ahead. Just enjoy now coming to be with your breath again. Really let your breath be the most important thing right now. Just following the breaths fully and deeply all the way in to the end of your inhales and all the way out to the end of your exhales. Good, one more full deep breath. Now be really mindful when you start to rise up, you take your own time and come up the way you need. So if you need to bring your feet closer together before you lift up, do. And when you get ready to walk your feet together, you know, sometimes feet get a little stiff, I know that. So walk through if you need to, move through your feet a little bit. And we're gonna go to the other side. So. Take your time, again, as you step down. Release on down. And again, we're going to rise them forward and up. Again, separate more. Keep forward if you need. Let your shoulders, you know, tell you how far they can go. And then just enjoy coming into your warrior one. Now think of energy all the way up through your fingertips. So you have energy into the hands and out through the tips of the fingers. And then you feel very strongly based equally through your feet. Warrior one, an incredible pose. One more breath. And then we'll release to bring our arms on down. And again, we're gonna turn sideways on our mat, get our feet at least as wide as your shoulders. If you can go a little wider, do. You might want to, and as you come forward, of course, grab your blocks if you need them. You might want to change the distance apart you have your feet than when you were doing the other side. You might want to get farther apart, but you might also even want to get closer a little bit with your feet. It changes the feeling of the pose. So if you kind of went to your limit before and how far apart your feet were, then maybe back out and come less, right? Because it does change how the pose feels. And then take your time and let your hands move over to the right, whether you walk your blocks just a little to the right, or maybe you like to walk all the way over and hold on to the right outside of your foot or ankle. And then come on back through center and we're gonna to go to the left. So again, it does not matter how far you go. Go where you can, take your time. And then let yourself release back into center. And be wherever again feels comfortable for you to be so that you don't feel like you have stress in your back. You feel like you're okay in your forward bend. You use the support that you need. And let yourself come into watching those breaths all the way in, all the way out. One more 
more full deep breath. And again, you get prepped the way you need to rise up to standing. Use your hands on your thighs if you need. Walk your feet together first if you need. Bring yourself together with your feet. Walk around a little bit if you need. And we're going to come into we're not going to come into the wall today. We're going to do a little balance from right here. And a lot of you might decide after you see this done with a chair that maybe one day you want to try a chair. But have both your blocks handy if you're using your chair, which is I, I'm going to start showing in the chair at first. I'm going to keep the back turned to me and go over the top. Now, if you're fairly short, you know, and there's not room for you to do that, you can turn the chair the other way. But So you're going to bring your hands down either to the highest height of your block, so that the blocks are right under your shoulders like that. Your back is pretty long or onto the seat of the chair, so you're not quite as far forward. And now let your feet come just a little closer together, and we're going to lift our right leg up in the air. Come into warrior three first. Let your toes face down. So, man, there you are. That's a lot of work already. Now, the leg doesn't have to be parallel to the floor, but if you can, you can let it stay up that high. Or it can be lower, right? Now, just for fun, turn to a little half moon with that leg. Open the toes away from the floor. And this is the fun part about having a chair. You can put your right hand up on the back of your chair and just open yourself up fully into that half moon pose without such a strict balance. It's awesome. And then turn the toes back down towards the ground to th warrior three again. And then put that right foot right back on the floor. Before you even think of it, lift the left leg up. Turn the toes down. There's your warrior three. So take your time. When you're ready and you feel like you can Shift more into opening the left toes away from the floor into your half moon. Again, you know, you can shift more weight to that right hand. I mean, some of you might even want to lift the, right, the left hand up and really be right there in your half moon pose. It's a hard pose, though, to do from here with full balance. Come on back down with your hand and your foot and take a little squat of choice. I mean, maybe you want to just come back to the forearms above your knees, rest there. Maybe you want to squat all the way down, right? So if your knees are fine, your hips are fine, and you feel really good to come all the way down into a squat, by all means do. And sometimes heels want to come to the floor, and sometimes they don't. Depends on how you're built. But we're going to come up and do that one more time, all right? So this time, let yourself get your hands again right under your shoulders on your blocks. And now, you're going to shift your weight to your left foot, bring the right foot up, and then open the toes away for half moon. And now think about just coming to your right fingertips on the block. So you're up with less weight on that hand. Some of you might even want to bring that right hand up to your hip. If not, don't do it. Or you can stretch the arm up overhead if you want to come into more of a half moon here. And then we're going to release, hand down, foot down. And we're going to go to left foot up, right away, open the toes away from the floor. And your heel is directly back from your sitting bone in this half moon. Again, you can come to left fingertips. And it's a balance, man. It's a hard balance. <laughs> if you think about bringing that left hand up. And then let yourself release back down. And again, find a little squat, whether it's elbows above your knees or you want to come down farther in towards a squat. Take your time. Just enjoy releasing your hips and your back wherever you can. Good. And we are actually going to come all the way down onto our bellies on the floor. So adjust yourself to get all the way down. And bring yourself onto your forearms just so you can let your back, as you come into Sphinx Pose, turn the palms down, letting yourself just enjoy feeling the elbows under the shoulders or if this is too much on your back, slide the elbows more towards your waist and don't go so high, right, which is a release too. They're both back bends, so I just want to find what feels really good for you. Just release your gaze to between your hands or 
maybe a little more forward depending on how you feel and how high up you are. And then just breathe. Let the front body open up. Let it feel like a break. And then we'll bring our hands together. We're going to clasp our hands, send our pinky finger out. You can bend both your knees and lift up to a half forearm plank here. Pressing into the forearms. Imagine you're pulling yourself towards the front of your mat. Or you can put your feet down, lift up into a full forearm plank if you'd rather. Letting yourself come up with the knees. That is up to you. Either one. A lot of core work. Be where you can. One more breath. And then let yourself release on down. Good. And let's bring our arms down alongside us. Turn your palms down towards the ground. But then let your hands come up higher. Not straight out from your shoulders, but kind of in between straight out and all the way down by the body, right? So they're just a little bit wider there. And on your next inhale, float up into a little locust pose. See if you can float your arms up as well, your hands up as well. Feeling the back body. It doesn't have to be high to be working. One more breath. And then release down. And now, see if you can put your hands under your head, make a little pillow and bend your knees and let your feet circle around a little bit. Doesn't matter what, how they circle, just let the feet and the ankles get a little bit of movement there. And then let your lower legs come from side to side like windshield wiper blades. Good. And then come back with the feet to center. Flex your feet and just pull your heels in towards your buttocks. Now, if you want to reach back and do the pulling with your hands, you can. But if your hands won't get your feet, then just flex your feet and use your muscles to pull the heels in towards your buttocks. Now, if you've got your feet and you feel good to push your feet into your hands, you can. You can even lift your head up. That's a bow pose right there. You don't have to go any higher. Right? You can lift your feet up if you want, come up higher into bow pose or not. And then we're going to release back down, let the legs come along, and let's shift back into pose of a child. Now, in your child's pose, you know you are welcome to stay forward onto your forearms so that you don't have such a deep bend in your knees. Take your time, do something that helps you release your back and your hips, not something that adds pain or pressure anywhere. And just enjoy nice, full, deep breaths into the low back. Find a good place for your arms to be where you feel as comfortable as you can in your shoulders and in your hips and in your back and breathe into the low back here. Feeling the low back literally rising with your breath. Good. So one more nice full breath here. And then to come up, we're going to take our time, bring our hands on to push our way up and we're going to come to sitting, so we'll bring our legs on around in front of us. And you know if sitting for you is done better off on a blanket, grab a blanket and grab your straps. So let's take the strap, and at first, let's bring the strap across the balls of both feet. Now sitting in staff pose, which is that capital letter L shape, where you're just sitting at that 90 degree angle. Not easy for a lot of us, right? The strap can help you, can help you sit taller. You can always bend the knees. You can always put like, I'll use a block because I have it there. You can put blocks underneath your knees so that it's easier for you to sit up tall if your knees are bent. So if your hamstrings are in low back or tight, this can be really helpful. And so it can be a blanket and be soft. Too. It doesn't have to be blocked. You can use blankets. And press into the strap a little bit and see if you can just lengthen up through the top of your head. 
Here you are in staff pose. Imagine your inner thighs kind of melting down a little bit. And you can use that support of the strap, really, to help you sit as tall as possible. Keeps you from having that curled tailbone forward feeling, right? Instead, the tailbone reaches down back a little bit behind you. Good. Now, we're going to keep the strap on the right foot. We're going to take the left foot out. And we're going to bring the foot in. Now, you can come to the inside of this leg wherever you want. Below your knee, above your knee. You can use support underneath the bent leg. Especially if when you thought, think about starting to come forward, you feel any weirdness in this knee, right? Support it if you need to. And then let yourself adjust as you come forward with a long back. So when you come into this pose, you really do want to think of coming forward from your low back, keeping the whole length of your spine. And you know, sometimes it helps to, to come back out of the forward bend a little bit when you inhale, and then when you exhale, maybe come back forward again. Or sometimes just staying forward and inhaling into the length of the spine, and then maybe imagining coming a little more forward when you exhale. So, this is a lot going on. I mean, you know you're getting the back of the right leg, obviously, but you're also getting really into your hips. And of course, really great work for the back. So just enjoy. Let yourself feel that right heel on the ground, drawing back towards you a little bit. Good, one more breath. And now take your time. When you start to rise up, keep your strap there because we're just gonna let the leg open to the right. Now how far you go is up to you. And another thing is this leg again, right? You can always, again, get the leg longer if it needs to be. If you can't bend it at all because it's really uncomfortable, straighten it out, right? You wanna be able to be okay in that bent leg. And then think about sliding your right hand down the strap towards your foot. How far you go is up to you. I mean, you might get pretty close to the foot. You might be up higher. Feel that sense now of as you bring your left hand to your hip that you're just opening your left shoulder up towards the ceiling. And there is a side stretch here. I mean, you can stay right there. You don't have to go any deeper. You can stay with your hand on your hip. You can put your hand on your ribs if you want. You know, if you want to lift your hand, release to the back of your head, that's even more, or there's always extending your arm out long. So, you know, there's all those little steps along the way. A side stretch, you just want to be mindful, and if you're up higher, it's fine. You're still getting a stretch through this side of the body. Good, one more breath. And now we're going to rise on back slowly up to the top and we're going to bring that leg on back to the front and then we're going to switch and put our left foot in, bring our right foot into the, in, anywhere you want on the inside of that left long leg, right? Get the strap across the base of the big toe mound, the little toe, toe mound and that leg is directly in front of you. So you're really, when you come forward from this, right? It's like the middle of the body is coming right out over the inside of this front leg. So it's not out to the side, right? It's like directly in front of your hip. And it's a strict forward bend. So again, if you feel like just any kind of weirdness, sometimes just a little support can help on that right side. So again, if you need to move a little bit, let yourself inhale into the length of the spine, then just imagine coming forward a little bit. Try to let it feel like, instead of feeling like you're fighting it, try to just let it feel like your body is releasing into that length. And even if you don't actually move forward at all, except in your mind, there's your muscles respond, right? breathing, inhaling in to the length of the spine. Start at the base of your spine and travel up with the breath. And when you exhale, just imagine whether you can come forward a little bit. Good. One 
one more breath. Now when you come up, be mindful, take your time, ease your way up. And again, hold the strap with your left hand because you're going to just open it out to the side. And again, how far you go doesn't really matter, right? You're, you're getting an inner thigh stretch, even if you just barely go, right? Especially once you start thinking of sliding your left hand down a little bit, down towards your, your foot. Now, you'll feel your inner thigh a little more, no matter where you have the leg, really. Right hand can come up to your right hip. You can decide, well, you can go, oh, well, I'd really like to bend this elbow more and go lower, or you can stay up higher. Hand can come to your ribs if you like, feeling the rib cage here on the right side. Or the hand can come up to the back of your head, which is kind of nice. Or you can stretch the arm out. They're all nice, actually. They're just all different, right? So just enjoy finding the side stretch where you just feel like, oh, it's just what you need, really. Side stretches are really important. Good, one more breath. And now as we slowly rise on back up, take your time. You can use the, your hand to help bring that leg back and go ahead and take your strap on off. Let your legs move around a little bit. And we are gonna turn on, on lay down onto our backs on the floor from here. So let yourself release on down. Bring your feet to the floor. And see if you can do a couple little pelvic tilts, right? So now you are exhaling and curling your tailbone up a little bit, inhaling and letting the tailbone come back down. The curve comes back into the low back. So let it feel good. Just little deep pelvic tilts. Good. And then finish the one you're on. Come back to a more neutral spine. And let's bring our right knee into our chest and extend our left leg down long on the floor. And bring your left hand over to that right knee. Stretch your right arm out beside you. And just draw your knee over towards the left here now. So you're coming across the midline. Now maybe you don't even wanna hardly go far at all. You can keep your right hip down really close to the floor and be happy. You can keep continuing over, farther and farther over and down towards the floor with that right leg if you want and come into the right hip, leaving the floor. And depends on you for the twist, what feels good. You can even turn your head to look to the right if you like adding that kind of upper back into the twist. There's the really, for me, it's more of a release, but I know it's not for everybody. One more breath. And then bring that right knee on back into center here. Kind of straighten yourself out. And then we'll bring the left knee in. Let your knees go a little bit side to side. And then come back to center and hold on to that left knee and stretch your right leg down long on the floor. Flex through both your feet. Right hand comes over to the left knee. Left arm reaches out on the floor beside you. And we're going to draw that knee to the right into that twist. Again, it might be two inches. You may feel like you want to descend closer and closer towards the ground. You may want to let that hip come up, but try to let your left shoulder release down to the ground. Again, if you like to roll your head to look to the left because it feels really good too. Good, one more breath. And now ease your way back into center with that knee. And let's bring both knees in. Let the knees separate. See if you can either have your hands come to the inside of the legs and rest on your shins or your ankles. If any of you want to clasp around your feet and your Baddha Konasana here on your back, you can. 
If you feel better to do, go towards a happy baby pose, go ahead and send those feet up and let yourself come into happy baby. Start to listen to your body, right? What, what do you need to stretch out right now? What would feel good, you know? You can come into wide angle there. You can come into any pose or movement you want. I mean, if any of you like to come into a bridge pose right now, do it. Be mindful so that you feel like your body is able to just go just where it needs to go for you to be able to relax here. I'm gonna start here in the studio to come around to get the lights and then I will be looking on the lookout for people who need support for Shavasana. If you're still doing a pose or a movement, please do. Don't, don't rush through. Let your arms or your legs move a little bit to a different place of you. In other words, sometimes just a, an inch or two, or you know, changing just a little bit of the height of the arms or how you have them turned, or the same thing for the legs. See if you can just feel that sense of releasing all the way up into your shoulders and your hips. Letting your face feel very soft. Imagine your eyes melting back into the sockets there. And just let yourself be with your breath. Nothing you need to do Bring yourself back to, you might want to count the breaths, you might want to think a word or a mantra as you inhale and exhale, but give yourself the gift of these few minutes and allow yourself to completely and fully relax.
to let your breath come in and go out a little more fully and deeply. Just accepting your breaths in a little bit deeper, a little bit longer. Imagine sending those deeper breaths all the way out through the body, all the way out through your arms and legs to your hands, your feet, fingers and toes. And start to wiggle your extremities, move around a little bit, your hands, your feet, eventually your arms, your legs. Really take your time. So if you need to stretch everything long, let yourself stretch. Bring your knees in if that feels better to you now. Or you know you're welcome to roll to either your right or your left side. If you're comfortable to do that, you can stay on your side in a soft fetal position with your knees soft and maybe use your arm as a pillow. okay to rise up to sitting. You do want to take time to get comfortable for your hips. So sit however feels good. Stretch your legs out or cross them or sit up on a blanket if you have or a bolster there. If you feel like sitting up sounds good. Sitting up higher. But close your eyes once you do start to lengthen up and find that sense of the central column of your spine supporting you. Feeling the top of the head gently reaching up towards the ceiling and your sitting bones reaching down towards the ground. And let your next exhale bring your hands to meet there in front of your chest. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. 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 Happy Thursday. But tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. And we have a chilly weekend ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Week ahead of us, really.